What's going on, everyone? We're live inside Kyle Field following Texas A&M's weekly press conference. I'm Alex Miller with the Eagle, joined always by Travis Brown. Big news of the day, Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher officially confirming that Haynes King will be the Aggies' starting quarterback to start the season this Saturday as they open the year against Sam Houston State right here on Kyle Field at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Travis, kind of not a surprise, but, you know, until word's official, you don't know. What you make of Jimbo finally naming uh, Haynes King A&M's QB1? I think there's something telling of the fact that I think we all knew that Haynes King had a little bit of an edge because he's had two years in the system, two years and now an offseason in the system compared to Max Johnson who just moved in. But he, he wouldn't name a starter. This is about the latest he's named a starter when he's had to name a starter since he's been at A&M. And that gave some pause as to maybe Max Johnson was the guy or, or he might be pushing. And of course, he gave the same kind of answer that he gave with Haynes King and Zach Calzada last year that it was neck and neck, it was down to the wire. But there's something maybe to the fact that they needed a little bit of extra time to, to go ahead and make that decision um, because it, it certainly seems like it might, might have been neck and neck. Uh, and he said that the, the offense responded to all three if you go in and throw Connor Wegman into that as well. We won't necessarily get to see how neck and neck it was until the chance maybe in, in backup time or, or, or uh, late in some of these early games when we will get to see Max Johnson and kind of see how he performed. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's Haynes King, it's Max Johnson, and Connor Wegman is the, uh, the depth chart at quarterback. And so uh, it'll be interesting to finally get to see Haynes King with, a, with, you would think, a full year under his belt barring any kind of injury. Yeah, you know, Jimbo said there wasn't one deciding factor that went into it. Um, but, you know, when you look at what maybe a guy like Anaya Smith had to say about Haynes King, he said, hey, Haynes is a winner. That's his demeanor. You know, he wants to go out there and win. a and knows they need to win. They need to win big. That's kind of the expectation after last season. And um, Haynes King's a guy that, that ultimately they must feel gives them the best chance to win as much as possible. Well, Jimbo Fisher has said in the past that, in generally speaking, looking at quarterbacks, the two deciding factors are decision-making and accuracy. Mm -hmm. And so you have to lean into the fact that Haynes King was the better decision-maker and the more accurate quarterback because that's what he said typically goes into these um, uh, com kind of conversations and competitions. And it's going to be huge because if you look at last year, really the deciding factor in a lot of those losses A&M had was quarterback playing the offense's ability to move the ball. I mean, you look at Anaya Smith, who's supposed to be – one of the standouts for this team this year, he was third in the SEC in uncatchable pass attempts, uncatchable targets, according to SEC StatCat, um, which is huge. You, if he's going to be your playmaker, if he's going to be the guy, especially to move the chains right. on third down, be your possession kind of receiver, you, you got to be able to get him the ball to where he, he can actually catch it. And so I think that's going to be huge for Anias this year. That's going to be huge for the whole wide receiving core and ultimately huge for the team if you have that quarterback who is consistently accurate uh, and Jimbo Fisher, that's that's one of the deciding factors he's always said. Well, Haynes King going to be the Aggies starting quarterback. Uh, game against Sam Houston, it's a game a should win. Uh, curious, you know, if they'll be able to get ahead enough to where they feel comfortable putting in second, third string guys with, you know, a decent amount of time left in the game. So maybe we'll get to see what Max Johnson has to offer against another team or what Connor Wegman has to offer as maybe the future of this program at quarterback. Uh, certainly something we'll have our eyes on on Saturday. Uh, good news for AM. Jimbo says no injuries, uh, serious injuries per se, uh, for the Aggies. That's, that's something that stayed status quo kind of throughout fall camp. Uh, certainly something uh, you you, uh, that's good news for a team heading into the season, too. Yeah, uh, I mean, injuries were a big part of what happened last year in, in a little bit of a down year, and so uh, you got to keep guys healthy. Another thing that's been interesting, too, is the, uh, the, the, the battle at center, um, <laughs> right. which seems to be, it, it's a little bit hush-hush, but, you know, Bryce Foster missed all of spring uh, football because he was throwing shot put at track, went to the, the national finals in shot put, uh, was hurt at the beginning of fall camp, came back in but we saw when we were out there we saw Matthew Wyckoff working with the ones just about every day and it's a question that we've kind of repeatedly asked uh, Jimbo Fisher he's been pretty coy about but but there is something to the fact that Matthew Wyckoff has been with the ones every single day and in, in, in what we've been able to see and so it certainly might be a fact that Bryce is 
steady in, in the guy and they just want to get that back up more and more reps with the ones. But uh, he also said that Matthew Wyckoff was one of the, uh, I don't know the exact words, but kind of a breakout performer, a guy that he was pleasantly surprised with right. um, through fall camp. So whether that means that maybe he's going to be the guy that gets the start where they move Foster over, where their Foster uh, has dropped down the second string, or whether Foster is just going to be the guy, he wouldn't really allude to that. But when we talked to Layden Robinson, Layden Robinson had some pretty high praise uh, from Matthew Wyckoff, and he called it a healthy competition between him and Bryce Foster, which, uh, you know, a, a lot of Bryce Foster fans out there, he's a, he was a really good for AM playing center in his first season ever playing that position last year. Uh, and probably people might be disappointed if he's not on the field, but healthy competition, especially at the offensive line, is something that they necessarily haven't had right. in seasons past, and that's something that you want to hear for a program that's continuing to bring in these good recruiting classes and building for the future. You know, it should be noted that we were not provided a depth chart today. Yes. So, you know, there's certain positions like on the offensive line where, you know, it, it is just uncertain, and we may not have an answer until, you know, warm-ups on Saturday or, heck, even when the – first team offense goes out there for that first drive. Um, so yeah, center's definitely something to keep an eye on as AM goes in his first game. I think that the guard position opposite of Layden Robinson is something to keep an eye on because we, we've seen Aki Agumbi, we've seen Jordan Moko. I mean, heck, if, if Matthew Wyckoff wins the center job, I mean, I guess Bryce Foster could be an option at that guard spot if you're going to put your five best linemen out there. Um, so, you know, offensive line, that's, that's just kind of a question mark uh, as well. As, whereas, you know, most other positions, maybe tight end, that's, that's a position we don't quite know how it'll be utilized. We've talked before how, you know, it could be guys are used in certain types of situations, but offensive line, of course, that's something to keep an eye on. And uh, something I ask a little bit, another one of those guys that we don't have an official confirmation on, but has been with the ones every practice is Jordan Gilbert at right. safety. Uh, and uh, the, the interesting thing, the thing that I think that was uh, telling from Damani Richardson when we asked him about Gilbert today is the fact that he's a ball hawk. And, right. and, and at times, that hasn't been something that you necessarily have been able to say a lot about A&M defensive backs, uh, maybe since uh, Armani Watts left the team. So if you do have a guy in there who's a ball hawk, he's tall, he's lengthy, uh, and that's not necessarily something A&M has had in the defensive secondary either. Uh, I think that'll be an interesting guy to watch and, and to see at that position because I think it would surprise me if anybody else showed up at that position. You know, something else to keep an eye on, you know, you continue to just hear, you know, what stands out about the freshman class and just the talent that they have, of course, coming in as the number one ranked class of all time. In a game like this against Sam Houston, curious to see how many of those guys get on the field, who kind of makes – an impact, gets that first impression. Um, I've been watching The Bachelorette with my girlfriend this summer, so first impression rose, per se. If Jimbo's gonna be handing that out, so there yep. you go, Travis. It's some really, that's breaking news. <laughs> Alex Miller, Bachelor Beat Reporter. It's so cringe, it's too good not to watch. Well, anyway, I think that's about all the time we have. <laughs> it's game week, we will have plenty of more uh, information, podcast videos coming up this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check theeagle.com for more uh, information from this press conference and the week leading up to game day, and we'll talk to you soon.